Hey guys, Frank here, and today I want to show you an Let me, wait a minute, I don't want to show you an image. Well, I have to show you an image. So let me just show you the image right away. So this is the image we're going to talk about today. As you can see, it's not a stellar image, but let me talk about that later. Okay, guys, so we recently did a workshop in Belgium with our model Flora, and we got a great studio, and the first thing I saw when I walked in was this hanging chair, and I thought, like, that looks awesome. But the backdrop, yeah, concrete, I didn't really like that. And then at the end of the workshop, our model came in with this cyber Eskimo kind of look, and I was going, like, this looks really nice in a hanging chair. The only problem was I wanted something in the backdrop that mimicked icy weather, a little bit bluish, and then we realized, hey, we brought a clicky with a blue canvas, so let's use that at the backdrop, and this is where it went wrong. Now, the clicky is a great backdrop for, for example, three-quarter portraits or portraits, but it isn't unlimited wide, it's only 1.5 meters, I believe. So, in essence, when you want to capture the whole chair and your model hanging in it, it's no problem at all. If you go all the way back and zoom in, because then you compress everything and it fits. But for an image like this, of course you want to use a little bit of a wide angle. So you want to go lower on the floor, shooting up to create a nice distortion of your wide angle. And at that moment you have a problem, because it doesn't fit on your backdrop anymore. And as you can see here, I did some fun in Photoshop. I, I never intended these images to be released. But then I thought like, hey, you know what? One and one is two, right? So what is the other one? Well, that's a retouch job I sometimes do for somebody. Now, it happens that on location you sometimes shoot, for example, sporters on a white backdrop. Now, what happens if the backdrop isn't wide enough? So in width, so not white, I mean, you get me right. So the width is not wide enough. So what do you do? Well, in this case, the photographer tried to get as much as the body of the model inside the white, but he still couldn't do the retouching for the very simple reason, the hairs were not in the white. And it actually took me also some time to get it perfect. Now, of course, Photoshop has a great select subject at the moment, but to get it 100% perfect for publication, you still need to do a little bit of work. And this is actually where this video is about. It's not about the image or, well, the shitty retouching I did on it. I just tried something, it was never meant to be released. But then I thought about this tip. If you're ever on a location and you have a backdrop with you and it's just not big enough, make sure that you always include as much as possible from the difficult parts of your model on that backdrop. So for example, the hairs, or if she's wearing something that's really ragged around the edges, make sure that that's around the backdrop. Because for example, a foot or a rope, you can easily clone out or just go around and fill it in with Photoshop AI. But hairs, that's always a little bit of a problem. So in essence, it's not about the shoot, it's not about the lighting. Now, if you want to know the lighting of this shot, we used our brand new Quickie softbox from Gikoto because it really aims the light towards our model. But today, it was just about planning. And planning is not just about using, for example, a clicky backdrop. It's also about where do you place your strokes in the set. A lot of people will try to place their strokes in a place where, well, it's easy to clone out later, and then you find out that you actually place it in the wrong area. Now, how do I look for places where I place my strokes? It's very simple. If I have to place my strobe inside the frame during a photo shoot, I will always look for areas that are easy to clone out, repeating patterns, for example, a stone wall. Nowadays with Photoshop, that's no problem at all. But if you place them in front of a window where there's a lot of stuff going on outside, that can be a problem because sometimes it just doesn't look right. So, placing your light when it's in the frame, make sure that you place it in a location where it's easy to clone out. If you have a choice for power cables, don't use black in a dark studio. Use actually gray power cables. Why? Because they're easily spotted and easily taken out by Photoshop. So think ahead, shoot your images, and then the retouching will be a lot easier and probably a lot better than I did here. So let's take a look at the behind the scenes video and the results.
Now, I hope you like this video and most of all the tip of course in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments below and of course reach out on our social media. We really appreciate a like on this video and of course a share and tell other people about our channel so we can grow. See you again next time. Bye guys.